My name is Rafael Sardá. I'm a senior scientist of the uh, National Council Research in Spain, which is called Consejo Superior de Investigaciones Científicas. I have been for many years since I get into, into this professional career uh, marine ecologist, working basically in some water environments and moving in, in my career to the, to the analysis of the impact of humans in those systems. I have another, another background. I have studies on uh, management. I have an MBA in, in business administration for ESADE. And uh, finally, what uh, in my professional career I can see is that an evolution from this marine ecological pure theory to what is uh, basically today socioecology, the analysis of social ecological systems. Uh, because of, the, of my studies of uh, business, uh, I have been able also to teach in, in the Sade Business School, which is a very well-known uh, business school in Europe, and uh, I'm part also of the THEMS. I'm a THEMS member, which is the community of European management schools. What I'm doing here in NOSIS was uh, basically what I'm doing in, in NOSIS is a combination of both things. Huh? We are working with uh, marine environments and we are working also on management of these marine environments. So basically we are working on socioecology. And uh, the idea that uh, in which I'm developing my science inside the project is just to try to, try to obtain other managerial uh, ideas to be involved in the management of public goods. Huh? So to be able to translate what is taught in business school, which is normally seen in practice in companies or in administrations, into the public good debate. Huh? And that's why, in this way, we are just putting uh, forward the ecosystem-based management system. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to present a uh, work we have been doing for the uh, European Framework Program FP7 NOSIS, NOSIS uh, Knowledge Base Sustainable Man Management for Europe SIS is a research project funded for the European Community and is delivered in several work packages. One of these work packages is about tools to, to be able to implement the knowledge provided by the project project and we are in charge of this work package. What I'm going to present today to you is uh, an idea to implement uh, these tools through a standard, much more manageable tool, which is, or we call it, the ecosystem-based management system. No sees uh, in a general topic, wants to provide knowledge science to be able to introduce in the European policy in a much more, much more managerial approach, the ecosystem approach. The ecosystem approach is a series of principles basically today and sometimes results difficult to apply these ideas inside a managerial framework. Uh, our work package is trying to produce kind of tools to implement this ecosystem approach inside and management, the management practice for European regional seas. Basically, the new uh, European environmental policy for the seas and for the oceans has two main components, the coastal areas and the open sea, and basically are uh, regulated today by, do, by two new uh, introduced directives, the Water Framework Directive, basically for the coastal area, and the Marine Strategy framework directive basically for the entire seas but much more focus on European economic zones and offshore areas. In both cases they have uh, some recommendations like the integrated coastal zone recommendation or like the uh, maritime uh, green paper just to provide ideas of how to sustain uh, our activities related with those environments. Uh, what uh, this policy has in mind is uh, to be able to, to make a sustainable use of the ecosystem goods and services provided by those environments as well as to maintain the integrities of these natural ecosystems. 
And at the same time, as a second objective of the new European uh, policy regulation, is the idea to introduce this ecosystem approach. Huh? Basically, what, uh, what we work with is the, the idea to implement what you are going to see uh, in uh, a, a clear space which can be worked as a social ecological system. So we are going to delimit, uh, to delimit a zone to management, to do management, and then this zone will be considered as a social ecolog ecological system in which social systems and natural systems interact. Uh, social systems, man-made systems, uh, activities, our, our activities in the, in, in the coast or in the oceans, pressures, impact on the natural systems which are formed basically by goods and um, by several structures that produce some functions and we are taking uh, from these functions and from this, uh, from this uh, structure some goods and some services to be used by the natural system. This is the social ecological entity in which our managerial approach is going to focus. So that will be the first step to delimit this, this particular zone in each case in which we are going to apply all the tools you are going to see uh, after. Uh, the ecosystem approach uh, has different meanings and uh, in, here in the slide you can see which is the definition that uh, from the, the ones we, we have in the literature the entire project has been able to introduce as the best definition for the project which is an integrated resource planning and management approach that recognizes the connection between land, air and water and all living things including people, their activities and institutions. This uh, definition is basically what uh, the social ecological system framework wants to put on that. Following the ecosystem approach, uh, it has been considered what we call it the ecosystem-based management, the managerial way in which the ecosystem approach is introduced in the, leg in the legislation. The ecosystem-based management, even if, the, if this application of ecosystem approach to management, has a very muddy definition, I would say, because uh, it cannot be distinguished very clearly what, with the principles of the ecosystem approach itself. Nevertheless, in the last in the recent decades, there have been some in interest for people to introduce which will be the basic things on the ecosystem-based management to apply to management. And here you have some, some of them who have been put in a recent paper developing an ecosystem-based vision and plan, so develop a vision for, for the management, incorporating the ecosystem science and information into management decisions, so apply science to be able to do a more much adaptive management, creating a contability and adaptive management for executing the ecosystem plan, so marine spatial planning and plans following the two previous ideas is, basis, is basic for the ecosystem-based management. Addressing cumulative ecosystem impacts within and across management sectors. This implies the idea that to be able to integrate the management, uh, to be able to put all these sectorial activities much more together and making trade-offs among competing and other conflicting oceans. There is a lot of users in the oceans, in the coast, so we need to do we are all able to do trade-offs with these activities to see which are the more sustainable ones. How to bring the, the ecosystem approach into practice? Which, this is basically the idea of uh, work pack assist, which is uh, basically tools for the implementation of the ecosystem approach. And the idea is going to be that we are going to present to you, which is um, uh, the novelty of, of this approach is just uh, to introduce something that is a step further on the ecosystem-based management, which we call ecosystem-based management system, which it tries to standardize a way to do this kind of managerial framework for the different social ecological systems in which you can apply the, these, these things. Huh? So in order to be able to do that, what we are bringing is basically a combination of what is a very well standard format, very well known environmental management system, who is applied, applicable to many, many organizations today, to, to many, many institutions, companies, private, public sectors, which is based in this kind of managerial loop, clear managerial loop from Deming, of planning, doing, 
revising and auditing and uh, this cycle means also the possibility to work in a process, in a continuous process of a continuous improvement. So we want to use this, this particular uh, framework, managerial framework, together, uh, to combine this together with the ecosystem approach principles to move in what we are going to call it, and we will explain later on, uh, is the ecosystem-based management system. The ecosystem-based management systems is then a combination of an environmental management system with the principles of the ecosystem approach. When we do that, uh, it is clear that uh, not everything in, into an environmental management system can work per se, because most of the things you are going to manage in the marine environment, in the marine domain, are basically uh, public goods, and when you work with public goods, other things uh, are important to consider. So the first thing we need to, to, to analyze is how to pass from the mission statement of the EMS, basically reduce the impact of, uh, of the organizations and institutions on their, on their own activities, to uh, the EMB, EMB, EMS, which is basically uh, to, to be able to translate the activities we are doing in a way that we don't compromise what is going to be called the good environmental status. Mm? And the good environmental status is per se the final vision of the European Marine uh, Environmental Policy. So when we are to put together the Marine Strategy Director, the uh, Water Framework Director, and all these recommendations is just to create or to be able in 2010 uh, 2020s, uh, the possibility to, to, to be working with environmental good status of the uh, marine European regional seas. Uh, so uh, what is in the slide is just a translation, which basically is different in the way we are going to plan things, a translation of the several clauses that you can, you can work with in an environmental management system, but applicable to what we are going to develop with this environmental based management system. There are some prerequisites that need to be taken in cons into consideration when we are working with the environmental based management system, the B EBMS. First, and I said before, we need to delimit, delimit precisely what is going to be the social ecological system under management. A regional sea, a particular marine protected area, a bank for fisheries, uh, an offshore area of uh, deep corals, but we need to delim delimit which is the area to be managed. This is the first thing to do. The second, and it's really important because all these tools can only be applied if a co an effective governance structure is in place. So this is part of another work package working in, in, uh, in NOSIS, Works Package 5, but we need to create a, an effective governance structure in which we can apply the principles of sustainability, the principles that are uh, applicable also to the ecosystem approach. But this is necessary because if we are not working with transparency, with efficiency, with responsibility, with those ideas that you see in the slide, it's not possible to, to, to be able to put the managerial framework in place. So this is also a, a very important prerequisite. A third prerequisite is to know the place. Eh? And, uh, as you will see, one of the first things we need to do is this ecosystem overview and assessment report, in which we are going to, to, to describe what are, what are the structure of the system we are going to manage, but also which are the activities that the human is, do, is doing right now in this particular system. So this is, becomes another prerequisite of the system. Uh, another one which is really important in order to put the, man the managerial scheme to work is to know what, what we are going to do, but precisely which kind of vision, which kind of final objective we want to obtain with this managerial framework, which is the final vision, the vision that moves us through the management. And this vision, because of the European Marine Environmental Policy, it would be just the good environmental status. So uh, to construct what will be the good environmental status for this particular social ecological system, it's important as a prerequisite to have it clearly in mind. And finally, 
set up your EDMS. Huh? If you have all these things done, you know what we the status quo of our zone, and you know more or less because sometimes it's difficult to construct at the very beginning. But we know what is the vision we want to reach or to maintain. If we are uh, more or less this vision is what is in the status quo today, uh, we can develop at least this path. Huh? This path in which we, we can base our mission statement, huh? just the, the, the way for which we are going to work until we get the vision. Okay, this is basically what is the EVMS. The EVMS works to fill up uh, with a managerial scheme this path in which adaptive management is going to be applied. Uh, and basically what you have is cycles of management. Uh, you can set up which is the timing of these different cycles in which we are approaching the vision and we can develop also, a uh, we, we can improve this vision through time and uh, setting up this kind of uh, scheme, this managerial scheme, which has three basic pillars. Huh? We work within one managerial pillar, the big, big triangle you can see in the picture. This managerial pillar is basically this EMS combined with the ecosystem, uh, the ecosystem approach principles. And then we work with two other pillars, which is an information pillar, which is going to be very, very important, and a participat uh, participatory pillar in which we are going to base all the effective governance uh, that needs to be in, in incorporated for a correct, move, uh, a correct working on, of this EVMS. So three pillars and a cycle that is repeated through time with a, a review of the vision, sometimes it is needed, and with some activities that are going to be decided at the planning stage each time we move from one managerial cycle to the other. Timing depends on the, of the managers of this particular social ecological area to move from one cycle to the other. Uh, in Workpack Assist, inside the ecosystem-based management system, we are working developing different tools. There is this enormous bunch of, uh, of tools that uh, today uh, in the literature you can apply to, uh, to work with the ecosystem approach. Uh, basically, in, our, in uh, the idea of our system, we need to set up three tools that are really, really important to be able to incorporate all these managerial pillars that you, you saw before. And uh, we are working right now to construct a decision-making tool, which will be used basically at the planning stage, an information factory tool, which we, had, we call it the GIS CS tool, which is the information factory that provides all the knowledge, uh, and the indicators, GIS tools to uh, set up uh, base your decisions, and a, a, a particip participatory tool, capacity building tool, which is going to be called ESCA tool. So we will describe uh, now, in a brief manner, what are those tools. Uh, the way in which we, ap we approach the, the DEMA tool, this decision-making tool, is based on the another managerial framework, which is the risk analysis. Uh, through risk analysis, what we are going to, to set up is uh, what in EMS is called environmental significant aspects. Here we need to be able to, to know or to understand what will be our main objectives to move in this vision. What are most important to get at the very beginning to get during this process. In order to be, to be able to put uh, uh, funds and to put people in several programs, we need to prioritize what those programs are. And uh, this risk analysis uh, is giving to us the possibility to set up, to identify first what are the programs that are needed, and then to try to uh, hierarchize, to try to prioritize what will be the programs that we need to add before. And as you know, probably risk analysis uh, it's a well known, another well known framework that is used for many uh, international organizations and it, it is based in four particular steps, risk identification, risk assessment, risk management, which is where decisions are taken, and uh, throughout uh, all these three schemes you, you, we need to communicate the risk we are analyzing. So what uh, we, we try to do right now is to, uh, in, the, in the tool, 
to set up a, a way to identify which are the risks uh, uh, and this identification of risk will depend on the probability you have to uh, to something happen uh, what we call it uh, the probability you have that an event came, came in, into the area or even uh, the the probability is that you are maintaining your states and those states are far from from the division you want you 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 want to get huh? so it works with this idea of risk on probability and seriousness and gravity of that these states or these events are from for the vision we want to develop uh, so we work with this kind of matrix for each one of the identified events or aspects that we should consider during the analysis uh, approach. Then, of course, each one of these uh, events or each one of these aspects going through different effects. It can produce different effects on the social environment, on the natural environment, on the legislation, on the, on the way uh, internal management is doing. So we, we, are, we will be able to analyze for all di different effects following the same matrix what will be the, the, the consequence for this particular aspect of this particular effect. Huh? So finally what we want to create is a table in which all these aspects to be considered and evaluated through the, all these efforts uh, and then we get into, well here we, we are em employed the semaphore approach uh, just to quant qualify more or less what will be the most important aspects that we need to prioritize. Uh. Uh, this is the kind of the approach we have for the risk assessment phase uh, once this has, once those aspects have been identified before. And finally, uh, the, 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 the risk management, the, the way in which we are going to put the resources to, to, to work with these aspects will depend on basically a cost-benefit social analysis. Eh? Uh, Works Packard 4 is also introducing some uh, ways in which we can measure what, for following this initial priority, prioritization, how we how we can work with this initial prioritization, or because because policy, because uh, social problems, because conflicts, whatever, we need to change a little bit the prioritization, the prioritization just to put the correct programs in place. Hmm? So the idea, basically, of the risk analysis is to end up as a decision-making tool with a final list of the programs that are going to be run during this first cycle of the EVMS. Hmm? So after being defined precisely what will be the program, we will create these programs, we will go to from the doing phase, then we will review by auditing how these things have been done, if we have some problems developing these programs, and finally we will close the, the loop by a revision of the entire system to move into the next cycle and to do another rise analysis in three, five years, depending on the of the of the management and what is the timing they, they want to assess. So this is basically the, the idea of the DEMA, the DEMA tool. And uh, DEMA tool has also two implications which are, which are important uh, at the very beginning uh, and that needs to be also well known. The DEMA tool should uh, know very well what are the problems that internally can have the managerial setup put in place uh, to develop this, this analysis. So sometimes uh, the risk is inside the managerial framework if you are not you have not been able to create it, uh, a, an effective governance structure. So this is something that needs to be considered at the very beginning. And secondly, at the very beginning also in this socio-ecological system under management, one of the programs that needs to be considered because we will we will need to develop programs is to, to do a marine spatial planning. So a marine spatial planning will come as one of the first programs we will need to develop just also to, to set up what is the cartography and the activities that are going to be able to do or proceed in this particular uh, social ecological system. Okay, the second tool that uh, uh, we are working with to just creating right now is what we call it an information factory tool for to help the decision making. Uh, basically what we are considering here is a combination of indicators that in Gnosis 
we are we are working with the, the framework of indicators of, of uh, drivers, pressures, states, welfare response, yeah? and panel of indicators together with uh, GIS layers, geographical information layers, and all this information provided with a web access tool. Huh? So uh, this is the, the idea to set up a kind of, um, let's see, information, we call it factory, a kind of information providing for the managers or for the public in general, which should be accessed to, through the web, in order to, to take the, the best decisions based on the best knowledge. Huh? And also this is, this is a way in which uh, adaptive management more scientific information we have, better decisions we can take because this information rapidly goes through in a transparent manner through the managers and through the protocol. So the GCS level base is based in a web tool, is based in uh, core data and good metadata uh, describing, data warehousing, uh, here we, we are just first the data, doing the data mining, then warehousing this, this data inside a uh, uh, our databases that can be related with uh, those indicators following the, the framework I, I just said before. Have a, have a web access, clear web access by uploading up and, and down the, the information and of course in a very transparent manner so it means that the, the data can be provided easily and can be see this data on and off through the web page uh, and the application. And at the same time, uh, the, the GCS tool is also intended to construct four European CS Mars observatories. So that would be uh, useful to provide information at a regional level. And uh, as NOSIS is working with the Baltic environment, with the North and the North Sea environment, with the Mediterranean environment, and with the, the Baltic Sea environment, we are going to be able to to put this information in four main regional seas and to, to use this GCS data applicable to a specific to a specific areas a specific areas in which we can put some examples or some social ecological systems to, to work with. So from these regional seas then we can set up different, uh, let's see, areas for management, like for example this marine protected area in the north, uh, in the northeast of Catalonia, in which a very large pro protected area is set up and this is, is considered our uh, social ecological system to work with, and then EDMS and un an effective correct governance structure need to develop here the way in which in this area we can proceed to, to obtain, to get or, or to maintain the good eco environmental uh, uh, status following the, the principles of the regulation. And finally, uh, the third tool we are considering, and this lecture is a part of the, of the tool, is a kind of enhancing eh? enhancement capacity building tool for managers or for the public in general. So in this way, uh, whatever environmental management system and because of that whatever ecosystem based management system needs to incorporate training mechanisms for the managers. Uh, one of the big big problems that we have in many many parts of Europe today is that the, the, jerk, the jargon application applicable to, to the legislation it's difficult to be understand by the local managers. Sometimes ecosystem approach, adaptive management, integrated management are words that are not seen in practice. So because those words are real and the frameworks that are represented by those words are needed to be understood correctly, we need to set up some uh, training materials and some training exercises like as this one just to teach in which uh, way uh, managers can get the flavor of the new European environmental legislation. So uh, the ESCA tool works with uh, materials produced during the work, the analysis, uh, the liberal case studies, reports, information indicators, and how we can put this together to uh, for training mechanism for training purposes, and also through the the setup of these heritage lectures in which uh, some. Uh, let's see, e-learning methods are incorporated into, into the, the capacity building mechanisms. So those ESCA, GCS and, um, and DEMA are the, the basic tools of, of the system 
the system uh, wants to, to work with these tools inside a standard tool. Uh, there's a standard tool that uh, has, as a mode uh, of conclusion, several, several things that I consider are important that people could understand. Uh, the EDMS is intended to be a standard tool to manage, uh, to manage social ecological system following what is in the legislation today. Uh? And uh, this has uh, particularities because it introduced the ecosystem approach into practice. So wants to be a, a way in which the new idea of the ecosystem approach can be easily understandable because it's easily appendable to something that is very well known, which is an environmental management system. Uh? Of course, clauses need to be changed. Of course, programs are going to be very different from what you see in practice in an environmental management system. But everyone in Europe, or even out of Europe, can understand what, what we are doing because we are all following a standard mechanism. This, standardiz this standardization, what it, it, it gets at the end, is a common language. So it's a way in which we can translate what is being doing in one socio-ecological system and in other socio-ecological system using the same words. And this uh, means a way in which we can translate the way we manage zones and be expanded and in that way we think that uh, they will create synergies to, uh, to introduce the ecosystem approach into uh, practice, to real marine practices. And finally, is also a way in which uh, the knowledge that it gets in one region can easily go to another region. Uh, the knowledge that we can put in a place in the north of Europe can develop in the south of Europe because the standard is the same. And at the same time, it's a way in which adaptive management, the, the way in which the science we provided can go into management, can be also incorporated into legislation. So I think that's all. Uh, I want to thank you to, to listen to this, this talk and hope you like it, the idea to create environmental-based management system for the future.